Hey, Jarek, what's happening? Uh, I'm coding this. Uh, oh, that's great. Say, listen, uh, I've been talking to the folks upstairs, and we think we need to make our apps a little more freemium. You think you can do that for us? Maybe add a little freemiumification to our apps? Uh, do you even know what freemium means? <laughs> Jarek, look, I'm more of what you might want to call a big picture kind of guy. I don't like to get bogged down in details, like what is freemium and what does that even mean? I like to leave that to people like you. So what do you say? Can you get this done for me? Well, we could reshuffle the schedule and... Uh... That's great. Hey, listen, uh, I kind of told the folks in upper management we'd have something for them on Monday, so I'm going to have to ask you to come in over the weekend and get this done for me, okay? Thanks a lot, Jarek. You're, you're a team player. It's Yarek. Keep up the good work. Hi, I'm Yarek Vilkevich. In this series, I'm covering things every developer needs to understand to be successful. User acquisition, engagement, and earning money. In this video, we'll focus on the money part and freemium. Freemium is a product pricing strategy where instead of charging the user for app download, you make money on in-app purchases or even upsell the user to a subscription. In-app purchases and subscriptions have already proven very lucrative for games. And according to App Annie, they are growing fast for non-games as well. To illustrate how this works, let's look at a small example called the Trivial Drive, which you can clone from GitHub. The sample app is a driving simulator, except that you can't actually do the driving. But anyway, Trivial Drive implements three types of in-app purchases. You can buy more gas, upgrade your car, and subscribe to the unlimited gas service. After your first free tank of gas, you have to purchase more by hitting the Buy Gas button. A nice dialog pops up, which guides the user through a frictionless purchase flow. The gas is what's called a consumable item. The car consumes the fuel, and the user needs to buy more. You can upgrade the car to a fancier red one. This is an example of purchasing a non-consumable item. The car upgrade is a one-time purchase. Let's now look at how that's implemented. Before you can sell something, you need to have inventory. The in-app digital products offered by your app are configured in the Google Play Developer Console. As you can see, I have set up gas as a stock keeping unit, or a SKU with a price of one US dollar and the ID of a value of gas. The ID is what the mobile app uses to look up the product and initiate the purchase flow. To initiate gas purchase, Trivial Drive constructs a buy pending intent, starts it, and then processes the response in the handle activity result method. As you can see, Google Play handles the purchasing flow. At this point, the user is in the possession of extra gas, so the app updates the fuel gauge display. Because gas is a consumable product, Following the successful gas purchase flow, Trivial Drive also calls the consume purchase method. Consume purchase tells the Google Play backend that the user took inventory of the product. The call to consume purchase is necessary because the Google Play backend does not make a distinction between a consumable item, such as gas, or a non-consumable item, for example, an item representing an upgrade to a fancy red car. While Google Play tracks the purchases so you don't have to, managing the user's inventory is your job. All right, so far I've showed you how to handle in-app product purchases, for example, getting more gas or a premium car upgrade. Now let's talk about subscriptions. Let's suppose I want my car to go on forever without having to worry about fuel. For a small fee, Trivial Drive lets me purchase recurring subscription so that my tank is always full. To implement subscriptions, you need to first configure a new product in the Google Play Developer Console. Configure the name and the ID, the price, billing period, and even offer a free trial. Then in the app, you kick off the purchase flow like in the gas example. This time, the SKU ID is infinite gas. Trivial Drive constructs a buy pending intent, starts it, and then processes the response in the handle activity result method. And voila, we're done with subscriptions. Finally, I wanted to cover one more aspect of using the in-app billing API. What if the app is restarted or uninstalled and installed again? Or what happens if the phone runs out of battery right after the user completes the purchase? The Google Play in-app billing API keeps track of purchases so you don't have to. Your app can retrieve products owned by the user at any time. It is a good practice to always do that upon application startup. This way, you don't have to maintain purchases in the app. And since the API utilizes a persistent cache, the response time is good. Restoring purchases upon startup also conveniently handles the corner case when the app crashes right after the user completes a purchase. There's a lot more to the purchase flow that we did not cover. 
For example, handling refunds and managing your digital products programmatically using the Google Play Developer API. What's even more important is securing transactions. You can use several techniques enabled by the Google Play in-app billing API to prevent bad actors from spoofing in-app purchases. Check out this Google I.O. talk by Bruno Oliveira. To learn more about Google Play in-app billing API, visit our documentation, or better yet, run the sample Trivial Drive application, which comes with several convenience classes you can reuse in your own app. Note that you need to publish the app to the alpha channel before you can try it out. Last but not least, remember that the Google Play in-app billing API is designed for digital products only. If you would like to sell physical products in your app, check out our Android Pay API. On behalf of your boss and the in-app billing API, I would like to say thank you for watching. <laughs>